Fall through attributes in Vue are one of those things that we use but don't really think about. When we create components, we know that we can pass props and listen for events. But what about everything else? Things like class, inline styles, or test IDs automatically get passed to our component. So in this video, we're going to take a deeper look at this behavior. To start off, let's imagine that we have a simple delete button component and all it does is render a button. When we use this component, we can listen for the click event and add some styling and these attributes automatically get added onto our root element, which is our button. And this is an example of fall through attributes at work. Anything our component doesn't define as a prop or event will be available in the attributes object. We can get this object in our template with dollar sign adders or in our script with a use adders composable. So if we log this out, we can see our class, test ID, and even our onClick event. But just as a quick example, let's say that we define our test ID as a prop. Since we defined it as a prop, it's no longer included as one of those fall through attributes, and we no longer see it in our console. Like I said in the beginning, this is something that a lot of Vue developers do without necessarily knowing all of its features. For example, the style and class attributes get merged if they're defined on both our root node in our component and when we use our component. So if we use our component with this set of classes, but had these in our root node, they would all appear on our end element. If we define other elements besides style and class in both our root node and our parent component, then the value in our parent component will take priority over the one in our root node. But let's say in our delete button component, instead of just rendering a button, we want to render a div with a button, as well as some text that gives a disclaimer about our delete button. If we go back to our app, we can see that our style and our click event are being added to our wrapper div instead of our button. Here, we're going to want to do two things. First, we want to turn on off views default attribute inheritance, and then we want to manually bind all of our attributes onto our button. So first we can disable attribute inheritance by creating a regular script section and inside of our export default setting inherit adders to false. Then to put all of our attributes onto our button, we can say v bind equals adder. And once again, this will bind everything that's not defined as a prop or an emit. So if we go back and look at our page, we'll see that our styles and click events are once again nicely being set onto our button. So while binding classes is cool, I think the real power here is that we can listen for our DOM event from a nested element inside of our component. If we're listening for things like click events, this is a lot better than listening for the click inside of our component and then listening for a custom event. Because when we do it like this, we can still add all of our event modifiers and have a lot more flexibility over our on click event. Manually binding attributes like this becomes even more important when our component has multiple root nodes. This is a new feature in Vue 3 where we don't need a singular root node for our component. So let's say we remove this wrapper. If we didn't manually bind our attributes, Vue won't know how to add things like our class and event listeners. In fact, it even throws a warning if we don't add a vbind in here. So this is another place where this technique can come in handy. We can also use this access to our attributes to do some sort of attribute validation. For example, if we're making a component with an image, we can throw warnings if our component doesn't come with alt text. Or we can even do validation on classes to make sure certain tailwind classes don't appear. And I think that attribute validation is a great way to make your components a lot easier to work with by throwing good warnings or having default values when things aren't used exactly how they're supposed to be. I hope this video was somewhat interesting and I'll see you in the next one.